So let's look into the connection part first. Let's brush up uh, this connection part. So connection part is used basically to establish connection between savient and the end application, right? And hence the term uh, connection here. So can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay. So connection part is we have savient here, right? And we have certain end applications here, which we call target system. And so uh, the connection is basically used to establish connection between uh, these end applications and Savient. So this is that's why uh, that is the main uh, reason we use uh, the connection. And also we use connection. So when we are interacting with target applications, it's a two-way communication. But usually when we interact uh, with the system auth source from which we bring in user detail, it's a one-way communication. We are not allowed to write back anything because uh, this contain user detail and we don't want to tamper here. So the first thing we always do is establish connection between Savient and this uh, user source, auth source. And what we do here is we pull in all the user detail from here to Savient conceptually. And how do we do that? To do that, first of all, what we have to do is actually uh, create a connection and in the connection we mention all the details uh, such as uh, there are only a couple of details which we have to mention we are bringing in user and after populating these details obviously and username and password there are certain things which we need is search for it as to but it, it is ad it can be different uh, when it comes to different applications uh, search filters basically specify where to look for the data. Object filter is what kind of data we want to bring in. And the most important part is the user attribute mapping. This, without this, the Savient will not to understand, not be able to understand how to map end application attribute with the uh, attributes in the Savient. So this is the most important attribute which we populate. And after doing that, we have to trigger using a job because job actually tell Savient which operation to perform and when to perform. And to do that, we have to go here and we have user import from database. If it's a database, we are importing data user from database. But if it's some other application, then user import via connection. We have to leverage this. And then uh, these are the various parameters which we have to tell. Name of the uh, name of the connection, external connection. If it's a Savient connect, usually it's no. So if it's external connection, select the name of the connection from which we are bringing in the user. And then uh, what operation do you want to perform? These are various options. For example, do you, what operation do you want to create? Do you want to create new users or update as well? You just want to create users or update users. So these are the options. And then zero to provisioning, whether you want to give birthright access to that person or not, whether they want to generate username, uh, generate uh, email. So these are check for rules, I'll cover rules today. So these are the certain options which you can do. And then you click next and then when you run it, it will bring in all the users from end application to Savient or auth source to Savient. So this is how we uh, create users uh, within Savient. And the second part is application onboarding. So application onboarding basically has, uh, it's basically kind of, uh, Major, majorly, it consists of three parts. First part is to uh, establish the connection between Savient and the target application. So target application has three things. It can have accounts, accounts as in people already have access to this application, obviously. Second is entitlement. Entitlement is basically defined what kind of access a person has. So these are called access or entitlements. So, uh, so what we do is when we establish connection between Savient and this application, the first is to establish connection and we establish connection and under connection, we can, we have to populate certain attributes and what are these attributes? So for connection, we have to, just to pull in the accounts, obviously we'll have to specify username, URL and password. After that search filter, object filter, obviously will tell where to look for a data and what data to, or what accounts to bring into Savient. And then uh, after that, we have to do account attribute mapping, as in to specify what is the mapping between uh, end application and Savient. 
so the uh, these all attributes are can be visible in savient at uh, in the database as if i don't have access to the savient database or training instance otherwise we have everything in savient stored in the form of database so you can see various attributes there and you can specify the mapping there as in how to do mapping for example if you follow this structure it will it will take cn from the end application and map it to display name attribute of account within the savient so uh, this is used to bring in accounts okay and after after you've established this uh, then what happens uh, then what happens is uh, you have to create endpoint and security system these are application specific configuration so what we do what i mean by creation of endpoint and of security system basically is for example this is the system which is known as payroll management so we create payroll management application within savia so when and uh, when i write account correlation rule which i showed you last time it's there at the endpoint level what will happen is when this uh, is the user uh, the accounts are brought using this connection they will be mapped to this endpoint and the corresponding users uh, will be mapped to those accounts okay after the accounts uh, have been mapped the next thing is to bring access which is the entitlement because savient will also provision accesses right so someone who is coming here should be able to request access to this application and how that person will be able to request for access if that that person has entitlement as i showed in case of our payroll management we created few entitlements usually we don't create entitlements uh, we actually bring it via import and how to do it uh, for ad the entitlements are known as groups so we have group import mapping configuration here so we have to populate a group import mapping here as in to specify uh, how the mapping should be done between groups between end application and savian and group search based cn as in to where to search for the groups and bring it so these two are used to bring in groups obviously we have to savian will not know how to run it so to run this thing we have to come to here and import application data import job we have to run here we can specify whether to bring accounts or accesses this the configuration is done here similarly after bringing in accounts entitlements uh, and these will be mapped to the endpoint so how it will be mapped what will be logic is uh, if we look here if you go to admin identity repository and we created security system and endpoints security system endpoint basically whatever so you can see in security system we actually tell about the connection which connection to use to bring in accounts the connection is here so you can select which connection to use to bring in accounts so secure system when we run import for this secure system what will do it will leverage this connection to bring in all the accounts and after bringing all the accounts it will map it to the endpoint so so endpoint will be created and endpoint will be uh, all the accounts will be pulled in there and all the accounts will be visible under account section Similarly, when you run access import, all these things will be imported here. You can see it here. Similarly, entitlement type actually tells what kind of entitlement is there. For ADF, there is member of, so you can see other creation here as well. And after doing this, we have to actually give user flexibility to request access from Savient to end application, and the user will come in. The user will go to the ARS tab. that person will look for this access this entitlement request is access and after provisioning the account will get provisioned the account and access will get provisioned here and how to do that the user will come to the ars bit of it that person will request access for himself or for other and again he will request access and after running the request uh, the request will be there and uh, after placing the request and after going through the approval so ars lets the review the ars part as well user will come to save it request access for any of the application after submit the request workflow will be triggered and what workflow basically does is the workflow actually guide us the approval process what should happen uh, what should be the approval path either it should go for manager approval entitlement owner approval or user group approval based on the logic which we have to configure and after all the approval it is moved to pending task it will stay in the pending task and how the, how the provisioning will take place we have to run ws retry job we have to tell savian to provision these tasks and these are done using this provisioning job and to run provisioning job we have to actually uh, tell couple of things first is only thing we have to tell is which security system we have to provision access for and after that submit it the job will get triggered and then it will move from pending task to completed task and the access will be provisioned for the 
end user. And again, to where we write the logic or to actually tell Savient how to provision accounts. For example, I gave Facebook example, right? To create any account in Facebook, we need first name, last name, username, and date of birth. So all these things, all we specify at connection level using create account JSON to tell what to, how to create account. Similarly, we write account name rule as to give specify how the account name should be created. Similarly, we have update account JSON to tell if we are performing any update operation, what action should be taken. Then we have disable account JSON. It tells uh, how to disable any account at the end application. Then enable account basically tells what action to take that if we are enabling any account. A simple example could be when we disable any account, we just change the status key from uh, disable uh, from active to disable. And we're enabling an account, we change it from disabled to active. This is something which we specify at connection level. So connection is one of the most important aspect uh, when we when it comes to working on Savient because mostly we're working here. Uh, mostly people work in application onboarding, and this is the major chunk which people have to do. So it's very important to have the clarity here why we leverage connection, when to leverage which part, and what is the logical thing. That's why I'm stressing so much on this part because this will be majority of your work if you start working in Savior. Any questions? I was just giving a revision. I don't want to rush and jump onto other parts unless you understand uh, these concepts. Yeah, okay, Ravi. I got this point. Okay. Next, uh, I actually showed you workflow, how to configure workflow. To configure workflow, we have to go to admin section. And under admin section, we have something called as workflow list. There we configure uh, two workflow. First, we use a payroll workflow. It's simple drag drag operation. You have to come drag, specify the emails. And then this is something which we configured yesterday. If you want to configure escalation, it should be like this. Simple UI, uh, not very difficult to work with. Then save, send for approval. It's done. So this was about a uh, workflow. And uh, after the workflow part, user creation, I told you how user are created first is via import. When we specify everything in the connection, user can be created. Second is via uh, UI, go to identity repository, uh, go to users. Action here, you create user, enter the fields, user will be created and upload. We did the CSV import yesterday to create users as well. So these, are the way to create user. And once you guys cover ARS, I showed you it is used to place request. How we do it? User group, I told, showed you how to uh, manage user group. User groups come to user group section here, and then uh, create user group. Create new user group. Specify all the fields. Add users, and user group will be created. And then SAV role. SAV roles are basically the roles which are used to manage access within the Sabian. Uh, end user doesn't need to have admin access and user just need to have access so that he can request access for himself and view request so and for admin the person needs everything and i showed you how access having a different access changes for access and say savian so to configure sav will go here sav role and these are the sav roles created as of now and i showed you yesterday if we remove something how it affects our view on the ui I also work on SAV role today for uh, 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 normal roles. This is an enterprise role, which are used to manage entitlements today. So uh, this was specific to SAV role. Now, let's see how we can configure email templates. So one of the thing is uh, whenever we place any request, for example, an uh, email is triggered, right? How will the manager know that that person has to actually come to save and to approve any request? Uh, for that, we have to configure emails and emails uh, are necessary because obviously to communicate anything to the stakeholders or, or to the users. So how to configure emails? Again, come to admin. So whenever we are configuring major, majorly, we deal with admin section. You can see various options here. Don't worry, when I don't remember where are various options. The best thing is to, in the later versions, they have given us a search box here. So you can just search email and email template will come up. If not, don't worry. It's just, you can just click it. It's not very difficult. So con it should be under config uh, configuration part. So under configuration, it's something called as email template. Just come here, click on the email template. 
and let's create a new template okay so you can specify as you say normal email type from where do you want who or from whom so whenever a person will receive email from will be sabrient ij team name is basically subject of the email and it can be test or pay role or system okay so it's it is name of this email template right subject is person will able to view the subject okay this is the subject of the email template uh, uh the it could be approve access if you are approval level uh take action on access request rather take action on access request okay could be there two can be to whom do you want to send it you can actually uh, hard code anything like abc at the rate gmail.com so this will be triggered to abc gmail.com or you can hard code it a uh, couple of examples could be here request dot email id and assign dot email id assign dot email id is to whom the request was assigned for example in the workflow if you are leveraging manager level approval so it will get assigned to assign don't worry about these fields you don't have to remember it actually you can always uh, refer to fresh test which this event has a uh, for to refer to these stuff in that you can see which dynamic attribute to use if you want to send email to particular person then requester dot email id it will send to the requester if i am the requester i will receive email right so it's there then similarly bcc and cc similarly what we have in the mail and here you can type the content hi approver or hi uh, assigned dot first name this is something which we use if you want to have a dynamic thing uh sorry uh, don't worry about it it's there you don't have to memorize these things these are just the variables which are defined at segment level you can always uh, assign dot first name okay and then come here uh, you have an access request uh, access request kindly take action anything can be there uh, just specify thanks segment team come and say create it got created here test payroll system so you can leverage it whenever you want to leverage it the major example could be to use it in the workflow to uh, to use it in the workflow again go to the google workflow bit and then uh, you can actually go to the workflow part here workflow list open the workflow for each you want to use it go here specify uh it's a notification email right for a requester if it is the same thing similarly notification email uh, for the assignee that is manager if you want to use use this okay then save the workflow and we have to approve the workflow if you remember send for approval the workflow is approved go to approval list and you can actually approve it from here submit and the workflow will be loaded and good to go and you can use it now this workflow will trigger email as per a new email template and to and the how the sabrent will know when to trigger email right a person comes that person actually uh, place the request but mails will not be triggered unless we run this email history job in the sabrent so to trigger job we have to run uh, email history job which is there in the sabrent uh, or it should be your email history job so usually we schedule these job to run every 15 or 30 minutes so that person don't have to run it we can come here or take action actually uh, start to run it manually or we can just schedule this job if you want to have a schedule here right so you can create anything name then we it last for this let's come here you can actually take action you can just schedule the job to run uh, you know early or minutes if i want to run after every 30 minutes i can just specify it i will run after every 30 minutes so this is how we actually configure email templates and whenever you want to use it we just specify it and then it's good to go so this is the example of email templates the configuration bit of it and how to use it and how to trigger or, or trigger the so i'll just uh, briefly once again tell you about uh, email templates so email templates how we configure email templates it or we go to admin section to configure a new email template under uh, under uh, admin we have to go to the configurations 
other configuration there's something called as email template here we configure the email template create new enter all the values enter all the fields and then click submit it and whenever you want to use this email template just make sure you select it there for example we did in the case of workflow to trigger email you have to actually go to uh, job control panel and run email history job then only email will be triggered okay because email are stored in a queue for example if there are 100 requests and email history job was not run they all the emails will be stored in a queue and once you run email history job then the emails will be triggered so this is uh, the concept of uh, emails in this area now comes uh, the concept of rule the rule is something which you will be working heavily on so basically sabient uh, there are a couple of uh, rules are needed everywhere and rules are used to manage user life cycle so what is the meaning of user life cycle these are called jml process jml is uh, so jml is nothing jml basically mean uh, uh, jml which is called user life cycle which is called joiner lever and mover so as the name says joiner joiner means what should happen if a new person join any company or organization right new people what should happen to them and their access a simple example is when you join an organization there are certain uh, by default access which a person needs and these access can be based on your location your job or kind of job you have your employee status whether a contract or a full time employee or uh, basically your office location so when any person for example if i am joining as a person who will be managing database in it domain i can actually have this condition that if a person a joining the company and that person has job title or job job code as system admin database system administrator given so and so access so this is what we mean by joiner what should happen to a person or his access when a new person join any organization right Similarly, lever. What should happen to person access once the person leave any organization? So, whenever we or any other any person leave any organization, there are certain ways or uh, certain ways to handle that person's access. One of the ways is to remove all the access that person has, right? And second is few companies what they do is a few companies say that okay, disable that person access for two weeks and after that remove it. So again. it's about what should happen to what uh, should happen to the user and their access once they leave okay and then mover mover is basically what should happen when the person moves from one department to other department when the person actually uh, move from one location to other location so basically it tells ki what should happen to that person's account and their access once they move uh, within different domain so this is called as mover so how to handle these configurations when it join a lever mover so there are two concepts to handle this first is technical rule and second is user update rule user update rule as the name suggests these rules are triggered whenever we update the user update user okay Uh, a simple example could be if i change status of a user so we have users identity created in sabient right and user will have certain access and for example uh, and let's assume a scenario in which what we do is we update that users uh, job title we move that person from database administrator to payroll management a simple example so that person don't need access to the database to manage a database rather than that person need access to the payroll management system so you can actually write a logic that if the department is changed from so and so do this to a person access so his access to database management system should be revoked 
So account should be deleted from that and new access should be given to that person. That is handled using user update rule. Now technical rules are basically birthright rules. So these are birthright rules. So what happens here is these rules are used to manage when a new person is hired or onboarded into Save Internet. So if a new person and what is the logical flow, how the flow is actually is firstly save is there right and we have this end application so whenever you are created the basic thing is your account is created here your account oh, sorry your, your your data is added to the auth source your account your data will pull in here save it will create a new identity for here within the save -int. and since you are a new identity in the save -int, it will trigger a technical rules it will check do you meet the conditions to have what access and based on that it will give you birthright access so this is how we handle birthright access within Savian. so technical rules are used to give birthright accesses and user update rule is used to handle a uh, situation in which user is updated right anything can be updated on user profile and these rules get triggered and as per the logic access either removed or new access is given to that person as per the logic we define any questions on the conceptual part of technical rule and user update rule? No, Ravi. Clear, right? Technical, technical rules are all all default rules and user update no, rules default, are whenever, it is whenever all user or rules. it's updated. Yes. Not say default rules, let's say it's a birthright rules. So whenever the new user is added, these accounts are get triggered. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll create a rule, okay, for technical rules. And we'll up upload a user. Obviously, we can't create a user for import. So what we'll do is we'll create a user using CSV imports. And then we'll see how the rule got triggered and what happens to that uh, rule and access as per the logic we have written. Okay. Okay. So to uh, configure these rules, go to admin part, select this, and come to uh policies here we have technical rules open the technical rule bit okay i have already created a couple of rules so uh you can actually have a look here but let's create a new rule create a new rule hmm. but let's okay rule name what is the what do you uh obviously we have to define the rule name right or uh, so you can just say uh test Pay roll, sorry, pay roll tech rule. Description is anything so that people understand why we configure this rule. Anything you can write. If you want to make any person role owner who will able to handle it, usually we don't do it because the system administrator who is who actually look at that going forward. But if you want to add any rule owner, you can add it. Now condition. So we have to specify the condition when the rule should be triggered. So how the statement will run? No, when to and for what user we have to trigger this rule, right? It can't just run the rule for all the users, right? As an example, right? If someone is joining, uh, ad, uh, sorry, a database management team, the kind of access they need will be different from what a person who's joining the payroll management team, right? To handle that, we have to specify the conditions. And how we specify the condition, there are two ways to handle it. Let's think from the simple UI version. So user, let's select here. Let's create a rule on the last name. User dot last name condition equals uh let's say uh sync. So what we I wrote a condition in which whatever specified. The new user onboarded if last name of that person is equal to sync. There are many attributes you can say like ID, username, display name, first name. It's a comprehensive list that goes. So all the attributes which are there in user profile can be found here. You can write anything here. But for sake of simplicity, let's take this condition. And you can have this and or or condition. A simple name could be username equal to greater than not equal to anything can be there equal to you can say uh judge sing oh that's something like a name okay let's have this condition here and 
and you can see and and or obviously and means both the conditions should be both met to trigger this too. Met, uh, uh, yeah, or can be just any one is there. Make sure that the end is always and because that's how it is. Uh, the last step it doesn't matter, but make it as and. And this is how it is. Okay. Now, now comes the part we have to tell what actions to take. Okay. There was some issue I was facing, so let me check uh, how I resolved it. There was some issue I was facing. Oh, uh, okay, got it. So you can see there is birthright, and last option I'll tell you what it means. But as of now, birthright means obviously it's a birthright rule, right? It should be this person should be given this rule when it's a birthright. Remove birthright if the access if the condition fails. So what this option means is, so let's consider this, then we'll cover these two options, okay? So what to do? We want to give pin one. Pin one was one of the, uh, or rather take payroll. So payroll is the security system, right, which we created. Schema, as schema is not important, let's do this. It's account assigned. So what, it'll, what how uh, it reads, how the save it reads it. If a new user is onboarded and if the user's first name or sorry last name is Singh or user's uh, username or let's take it first name first name is equal to Jack create new account in payroll management for this user and you can just say send for approval and hence we have this rule where is it here? Yeah, we have this rule for tech payroll management. So let's again visit how the how this rule will be triggered. So whenever a new user is created, technical rules are triggered, right? And technical rules rules are triggered. And uh, uh, what happens is whenever a user will come, whenever a new user is created within Savior, all the detective, all the uh, this technical rules will be triggered. And then it will look for the condition for which user to run. So we can have condition as per our logic, but as if now we have this condition which we have written, if user's last name equal to Singh or user's first name equal to Jack, run this rule. And what should happen is payroll management account should be assigned to this person. We can have multiple actions defined as well. It could be payroll, uh, then object is. Let's I'll tell you this what it means. But as of now, let's give this account for this user and make the access assigned. Okay. And then uh just send it and let's create a new user. Let's see what happens and how it's triggered. So to create a new user, let's uh uh leverage the CSV which we have been uh, using. Remove this. So it should be J Singh should be the username, doesn't matter anything. The first name was Jack, right? And last name should be Singh. Just save this user and let's create this user. Come here. It's a user creation, right? So we'll have to go to identity repository. We have to go to the users, action, upload user. First row is heading, yes. Zero to provisioning, yes, because we are creating checking rules obviously we are checking rules so it's yes i'm here select this and uh, abc copy open and upload what happened right. okay let's do it again there was some issue upload user yes yes certificate yes Code and preview. What's up? This is this user is created and it should trigger the technical rules. But to trigger it, rule the rule, we have to run job control panel. Actually, we have to come and run uh, this something called as detective rules. We have to run that. Come to job control panel and on the utility, you can see. Run, detect, run detective rules and take action is something like this is here. 
we have to come and actually we have created it so we'll can create a new instance and come here and just run it start it says run all detected rules you can specify for which to run so we have done all detective rules. I'll cover these uh, user update for uh, PubBit as well, but let's run it for all. And after the run, job is run, so what should happen is, uh, new account task for payroll management should be created for uh, Jack. And how we can see it, whether it got created or not, we have to go to the pending task or of my pending task list, which comes under ARS section. To go to ARS, you see, come here, go to the task bit of it, check for pending tasks. And we can sort it via date. See, new account task got created for Jack C. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is the concept of uh, technical rules uh, there does many things you can do using this you can create account you can create access uh, you can uh, because generate is used for these because these are the boards right uh, rules right so but this is the step how we actually uh, follow to do it I'll tell you sort of certain sort of, sort of things so just to uh, did you get the concept uh, the basic concepts uh, of technical rules how I will use technical rule, what is the purpose, how to trigger it. Yeah, I got the point. Okay. So basically these are used to manage the birthright accesses. And uh, the first step and how the steps are are to be followed for this is uh, basically first we have to configure the technical rule. Under technical rule, we have to uh do certain uh, we have to write the steps and uh we have to handle a couple of things uh it can so we can give access to a person we can uh give account to a person and uh we specify these conditions and when the user is created it doesn't matter how the user gets created it can be created using ui the user can be created using mm, CSV. Uh, CSV import or via import from authoritative source, it gets triggered all the time. So that's how the concept is for technical rules. Now, a couple of pointers uh, to look here as well. So I showed you how you can uh, write the condition from the drop downs which we they have provided, right? But what if uh, the drop down which they have provided doesn't meet the criteria? in which we can actually write the rule, right? What we, I want to do something which is can't be achieved using the UI option which they have given here. To handle that, how we handle it, we actually are able to write the query by ourselves. And for that, how we do it, the simple tab with the, in the conditions called advanced config. If you want to use it, well and good, but if you see you can't write a condition here, just switch it on. And they are given you a simple example as well. A dot basically means it refers to A dot is basically used to refer to the user table. Everything is stored in form of database information. So A dot first name is used to refer to the table. So as you can see the example here, A dot first name like Andrew. So anyone whose first name has Andrew in it, this will be trigger and a duct or custom property not null is null. For that person, the cu custom property one should be null or custom property one should have EMP or EMP1. So if this condition is met, then this rule will be triggered. So we can leverage this to write it. And why we use A? Because these are run for users. And that's the that's why they've given an example which we'll cover pretty much. And that's example is pretty self-explanatory. What to do and how to do it. So this is the example we can write if you want you can write a dot uh, first name similar like in our case it was a dot last name equal to jack we can write a condition like this or you can if you want to run only for active users you can write a dot custom property 5 or status key uh, in 0 1 or active de depending upon how you can write or 
a dot status key is equal to active so we can write a simple sql query to mention the conditions here so you can use either advanced query to do it or you can just use this to do it so this is how we actually do it how we give access to people and that's how we actually configure it using two ways so this is the concept of uh, technical rules and to trigger technical rules we have to actually how we actually do it is we have to go to job control panel and then we have to run our detective rule job and then only it will run for it will actually trigger to check for uh, these detective rules and that's how we do it okay so okay. next next is the concepts of uh, user update rule so user update rule it's simple it's very uh, it's it, it runs along the similar lines so let's create a new user update tool and see what are the various options there how to do it enter name of the rule so we can say test pay role user update rule okay now detective what is the menu detective so when you mark detective it will only be triggered when the user is updated via import when the user is updated by import and when the user is created by import then this detective rules are run if you mark it as no it can check so these rules are also triggered when the new user is created but generally the user or the technical rules but this as you can say in the option it is mentioned that whenever the new user is created from ui so let's since we can't import a user let's create when trigger when the user is updated from uh updated from ui okay so this is uh how we use it and to configure it what we have to actually do is it's similar how we configure we have to specify the source here and once we are here similar thing we have to mention condition as in how to actually trigger this so let's see user use obviously for user id equal to their condition we can say equal to and last name uh, what is the value uh, what is id what is the first name so let's do a simple operation here what we'll do here is we'll try to remove access for a user and let's see how the accounts get created let's see if we have any user who has uh, account uh, account section let's go here and check who are the user who have account here account and let's first do it. let's up a payroll management let's take this user and uh, let's see if we have the user okay this is the person who has this so last name is Henik. okay let's see equal Henik is one condition it's the last name right let's put your last name here then what to do we have certain things here right you can see certain options that's pretty comprehensive that's pretty much comprehensive as compared to what we want detective rules here create a user up update account you can update the user task okay you can deprovision access you can deprovision endpoints which is deprovisioning the account and then we have a uh, we can deprovision role of a user we can disable user we can disable user accounts enable user so these are the various options which are there and for each of these options you can actually refer to the freshness ticket because if i tell you everything obviously it will confuse you so you should actually uh in the uh, in the fresh test they have explained why we need various tasks and how to do it so for this example let's say deprovision endpoints uh deprovision access select endpoint yeah deploy access so it says for which endpoint do we want to deprovision access we want to do for payroll management right we can select multiple here and then send for user all to mark what are required Oh, okay okay this got removed select Henig here select Henig here send for approval so now whenever we update a user from the ui this should be triggered and uh, once again we did something which is so 
one is <clears throat> and also let's add another condition here let's say user and let's say uh what can be a date let's see what does this user has let's say first name so we can also have this condition in this first name equal to is updated okay and then save it so what we did here we specified two condition first is only trigger for, uh, this rule for that person whose last name is equal to Henik and the first name is updated. So unless the first name is updated or any of this condition is not met, this will not be triggered. So let's go here, let's update the first name is this, this user from Abby to let's say Abby and let's update this. After updating this, we have to we can actually see in the history uh, what happened. So you can see in the history, right? Run rule. It says that it ran this rule for this user. So for update rule, you can actually come and view which rule was uh, run for this user. So what happened is we updated the first name and the technical rules. So for a user update rule, we don't have to run any task. Only detective rules. What do you mean by detective rules? Uh, which are actually uh, updated via uh, imports. For that, we have to run run detective rules. Otherwise, it gets update rule gets triggered all by itself. It got triggered here, and let's see what were the actions. So it should create a remove account task for Abby for payroll management. If that person has payroll management, if it doesn't have, it will not be triggered. That person has this payroll management account, right? So it should have created remove access for this user to check that let's go to the pending task and then uh create here let's see you can sort it yeah it got remove access it got remove access for this user so it, it created remove access for this user based on the conditions which were met and which were defined in the uh user update rule so this is the user update rule. It's updated when the user is updated. And that's how it's, uh, it gets uh, created. Another example, which is we use it for the termination. We use it excess excessively for a termination. So whenever a user is terminated, we trigger uh, this rule, right? And uh, uh, we actually uh, can do certain things. So let's see. Let's consider another example which we actually can do here. Let's come here. Let's open this thing. We can add multiple things here. We can, and the later version, we can also specify the day when you want to do this. So add action here. Uh, let's say disable user account because we want to disable the user account also, right? uh this able user account we want to use user account for which account so what we did is it's not just important to deprovision actions we have to disable the account as well because account contains entitlements or the access right so what we did was we created deprovision actions what will happen at the backend application if you think account has details of kind of access that person has as, uh, as well right so when we remove, remove access it will remove that access it will remove it from that person's account but it's very important to disable the account as well otherwise account will be in the active state without any entitlement so how can we do that to leverage that we have to come here and say disable this account as well and then send for approval so now what will happen is two things should happen two actions should be taken first the disable user account for payroll management should be created and uh and similarly this uh, remove access should be created in the later versions they have given a very good thing that uh, you can specify the number of days after that it should uh, get removed so in this case it is removed instantly when the job is run but in the later version you can specify when to remove that access like after 10 days 15 days whatever the logic is and uh, whether you want to another option is there where you want to just remove the access of the accounts you can have in one column only so this is another good part but this is how will happen so if uh, and let's make it as 
or and let's see what happens so whenever the username will be updated this rule should get triggered okay let's come here and update any uh, user first name for this user and make sure that that person has payroll management and then it should get triggered mm, we have to write it to the repository accounts let's see how many people have created only one half so let's create this for finance so five in one application because there are two accounts and which the person has uh, this access right so what you can do is then come here we will modify it because uh, we just created remove account uh, or remove access to that user so i just wanted to ensure that uh, we have a new user and rather than using a payroll management let's also add pin one application pin one you can also see there's option of all if i write all all the account all the access will be deprovisioned whatever this person has and all the accounts that person has will be removed okay uh, let's take this user other for this user go to the users and take this user so what the rule says last name equal or user name first name let's update the first name of this user now say jackie and let's update it okay this is done and let's see in the history as we saw that right it should uh, get trigger see this rule got triggered so when either of the conditions are met this will get triggered and now what should have happened here this person's account and access for pin one should be removed and that we can see under ars because tasks are visible under ars okay it's uh, the configuration is as such come here we can see creation date see disable account and remove access got created for this user so this is how uh, we manage users access using uh, user update tool and technical tools and that's how we handle jml as in join or labor mover this is the way we handle it now let's jump on to the roles roles are also very interesting concepts and why do we need roles let's see uh, for a simple example <clears throat> consider a scenario in which uh, is it about approval appro uh, approvaling the request no no roles are basically collection of accesses okay okay or entitlement so consider a situation in which uh, i am joining a firm in hr department and i need access to uh, 100 uh, 100 entitlements just a simple example so it doesn't make any sense for me that request should be created for 100 entitlements and i should get uh, i should uh, actually uh, then there, there should be 100 people who will be approving the respective entitlements or accesses and then i'll get access to each of these so it's too much of a overload right i have to manually come and re uh, or request access if i if i'm moving or we have to configure a rule in which we have to mention 100 entitlements and it's very difficult to manage such situations right so the better approach could be why don't we club all these entitlements together in one role and then that person can easily come and request uh, for that role that will be a better approach right rather than that person actually coming and requesting individual roles let's a uh, rule uh, entitlement sorry let's give that liberty to that person so that a person can, person can come and request access for one role and get uh, and that person can have access to all the entitlements so these are the concept of roles are nothing but their bundle or collection of entitlements now uh, the, so now ars part let's look at there that's a very complicated stuff i've never used it <laughs> so when you go here you can see certain tabs which are specific to roles they are manager manage roles they are request roles they are enterprise roles so how to handle display of these roles we have to go to sav role to handle it and i'll show you by changing options how these things change come here go to the section go to identity repository and then come here and see go to sorry 
go to SAV rules. SAV rules. For the end user, we don't want them to create, give this button so that they can create new rules, right? And manage rules. We just want them to give access so that they can request for rules, right? So what we'll do here is we'll just go open any SAV rule. And this is the part of ARS, right? Request home options. So here you can see manage create rules. Then you can see a request for rules should be here somewhere here. Oh, let me search rules. Yeah, request enterprise rules, manage and update rules. So we just want this to give end user this role. So we'll select this and whoever is the person who has access, who has just have a role user, will have on the uh, ARS page, they can see these three options. As of now, I have administrative access. So what I'll do is I'll update my uh, SAV row and let's see how it impacts the way it's looking. So I remove this thing, I remove this thing and I remove, so I just remove two options, see what happens. See, I can just have this one SAV uh, management role here. So this is how we handle using SAV rules, what thing a person can do. A simple example could be uh, most organizations, they don't have roles, the concept of roles. Uh, so if there is no concept of role, it doesn't make any sense to display any of these things because this, this will just confuse the end user. So the best thing is to remove everything and just give only those options which the user will be leveraging. But for our uh, the session, let's give this user access to let's see, uh, create rules and then uh, request rule. Uh, have a uh, rules happening. Uh, mm -hmm. Create rule, request uh, not emergency rules. We have to. So there are certain types of rule I'll co cover it, but request enterprise. Let's do this. Okay. Then go to the ARS page for this user and see, we can see these options are there. So let's create a new role. To create a new role, come here, click here, go to create role. Now we have to mention name of the role. So let's say test payroll, sorry, payroll management role, roles. The status will be active, uh, everything will be uh, the same. And then whatever you want to provide description, uh, what should be the description of this role so that people understand what should display name, which will be visible to the end user. Let's keep the display name as same. Display name is something which is visible to the end user when they are requesting. So this role is judged for the reference part of it. And if I mention this, right? So the end user will be able to view this, not this part. So let's keep it this. Grocery is basically a little bit of idea so that a person is able to understand. We are a custom property, we want to leverage it. Uh, usually we don't, so leave blank. But if you want to leverage it and uh, for some other things, uh, you can. Requestable is whether you want to make this role requestable for end user or not. So you can also assign role using rules. But if you want a person should be able to request this role, mark it as true. If no, then mark it as no. Time frame is the hours that this role should be applicable so simple thing could be sometimes people are given a role which is not supposed to be you know lasting more than a few couple of hours so you can leverage this to do it and then privilege you can specify whether this role is privileged or not as per your organization confidentiality how confident confidential this role is sys control socks control all these things are just the parameter of the application level then we have this uh, then we have this role type. What is the, I'll tell, I'll tell each and everything why we use it. But as now, let's say enterprise role. And what enterprise role is, it's basically combination of entitlements across applications. So it can be anything. Uh, so, uh, and let's click on next button. Now it will ask role owner, who should be the person who will be managing these roles? So add any person. It doesn't matter, you cannot add anyone. So save here and then go to the next button and it will ask you about the entitlements. Who are the people who will be 
uh, what kind of entitlement the person will get once they request for this role. So come here, click on add entitlement. You can add entitlement just related to payroll management or to any application. Suppose this person needs these three entitlements, just come here and save it. So by requesting just one role, this person will get access to these many entitlements. Send for approval, confirm. The role got created and the name of the role is test payroll management role, this one test payroll role. The role get created. And now after creating the role, the process remains similar. A person can come here, person can click on request enterprise role. For whom do you want to request? Just request for this person, click on next. And then we have these three roles in the system. You can just click here, it will give you the description and glossary so that person can understand what kind of role they are looking forward to, what kind of access they'll give. And see that it, it only display name is visible. It's not test payroll management roles is not visible. Just the display name is visible. Come, click here, check out. Now, certain things are there, end date and start date. So there are certain uh, configurations at global level. I'll show you where to handle it and how it affects it. But as of now, I can specify end date from when I need this access till what time I need this access. So you can specify it here. Uh, and then comment, why do we need this? We can handle all these, make it required, not required, mandatory, not mandatory on the global configuration part, which we'll see how to do it. And let's submit this. This will all get submitted, just like we handled a normal request. That's how we handle roles. But the good part about roles is it allows us to request multiple entitlements bundled together as part of one request. Now, there are certain configurations which we manage at the global config level. For that, let's go there and let's see what's there in the global configuration part when it's come to managing the rules. So there are, as I showed you in the normal request, right? In the similar dynamic attributes in which we take input from user, right? We can have similar dynamic attribute for the roles as well. If we need input from user, just come here, add attribute, you can create and these will be applicable. These are just similar to what we had during uh, our normal uh, entitlement request. Similarly, enterprise raise, if you want request approve comments to be there, I reject comments to be there and required fields. So initially you said that these three were required, right? End it, start it and request do. If I say no, these will not be required field anymore. So let's see whether I just change, make the changes here and what happened to the request enterprise rule. Come to here, go to next, we'll select this rule, go next. See, these are not required field, there were asterisks coming, right? This is not the required field anymore. But if I make it required field here, Now, you know, the, these two become required field. The red mark is coming, which makes which it's a required field. Then justification request level, we need justification. You can mention it here. Similar similar con configuration we have for emergency role access. There are different kind of rules which are here. And then we have obviously the roles configuration. The role uh, can go through certain approvals, right? As now, where do we, where are we specifying what, uh, sorry, what uh, approval workflow it should follow. We can mention it here, role, add workflow. Then if you are removing it, what should happen? You know, these are a certain configuration which are role manager configure, approval comment mandatory. We can make that approve, whenever a person is approving that comment, that should be mandatory here. Reject comment uh, mandatory, whenever the person is rejecting, uh, that should be mandatory here. So these are the, it's, and below are the email templates which we have to, which you can leverage if we have not specified at the email or temp, or sorry, or workflow level. So these are the various configurations which we handle, right? And the, these are there. 
one of the major uh, so if you think from logical design perspective two to three things to keep in mind here first is roles are nothing but they are the bundle of entitlements if a person is requesting any role that person can get multiple entitlements and it's just easier for the management of the overall process that's why we use roles to access role firstly we have to create roles and after creating roles we have to bundle or assign entitlements to that the and are then after uh, doing that come to admin global configuration here we can handle global configuration just to make sure if you want end date to be there or start date of a role to be there similarly if you want to assign workflow which route should take whether be a person needs a comment or not all these can be handled and then uh, if we need dynamic attributes just in case oh, we need for the normal access request we can configure it here and after that every other process remains the same when the person makes that request that request will go through approvals uh, as for as per our workflow and then that person can actually uh, the person the request will go through sorry all the approvals and once the request, this is approved then task will be created in the pending task and once those tasks are provisioned or by running the ws retry job then that person will get access to respective applications so these are the concepts of roles any question overall what are roles how we do it simple concept right just like the access request we had so these are the requests which uh, got created and let's see enterprise role request it should request it for this since ganesh was the manager it got assigned to the manager for approval everything remains the same so assign is ganesh because he was the manager and we are leveraging the manager workflow and it's in the pending state so it's assign is ganesh who is manager of this person that's how it is so once the person will able to approve the request then the task will get created and let's say let's sort it and approve the request so enterprise role for this user and let's approve the request account request got approved see for this user the request got created so that's how uh, let's see abby what happened to her whether she got this access or not so this is uh, the similar process which is there for uh, entitlement request so that is end to end process it follows the similar approach but most organizations they don't uh, deal in roles but it depends uh, from organization to organization but uh, if they need roles that's how we handle those roles and one of the things to look here is they have uh, shown us in the role section right they gave they gave us options to create many roles if we go here and we go to identity repository and if, sorry let's go to nationalism okay and let's create a new role i just wanted to show you that they gave us various types of roles like in the role type you can see we have enabler transactional emergency access enterprise application and entitlement these are the various roles and enabler role is typically used for active directory application to create ad groups in mineral roles was primitive approach to create ad groups so these are basically used for active directory based applications transactional role is nothing but they are just use it as a tag and it doesn't have any significance you can use transactional role for any purpose it doesn't matter emergency role as the name says these are uh, needed these are the role that have access or entitlement across multiple application organization emergency role that time based roles right and they are requested only for particular duration of time so whenever you want to request access particular duration of time then emergency roles are used enterprise role are basically roles which can have entitlements for multiple endpoints and then application uh, role is basically specific when you want to configure 
uh, for one application. You don't want to have entitlements cross applications that was use this. And entitlement is basically used to manage AD groups as well. But I'll tell you a tricky part here. We have these many options, but when you come to ARS admin part, you can only see two rules. One is emergency and one is or one is enterprise. So this is the issue with the savient, and I think it was raised by someone, and then they said they'll look into the issue. And uh, so to be honest with you, savient doesn't have a very good design from a product perspective. For my recent project, for example, I've worked on this project for around four months, and I've raised around 15 to 16 tickets for enhancement, which because most of their functionality actually breaks. And so that's the reason how savient implementation basically takes place is whenever they are doing the implementation bit, they give you a dedicated engineer to work with you. And in our project, which I'm currently working, we have uh, the connect with the Savian team twice uh, twice in one week. So we have bi-weekly connect. And whenever we run into issue, we discuss with that dad person and that person actually help us guide. And if that person can't have any solution, then we raise a ticket and then they come and fix the bug. So it's a very buggy tool. It's not a very mature tool as compared to sale pointers. But having said that, there's nothing we can do about it. Just make sure that uh, we, we can work on this. And that's why people who move from Savian to sale point, they find it very difficult to digest that there are certain functionalities is a tool that doesn't suggest and which doesn't make any sense, which happened in my case as well. But there's nothing we can do about it, Just but just to make sure that we make the best of whatever we have. So a simple example, which I, I, I can actually uh, see here, if you go to the SAV role and SAV role part, right? And we come here and go to role admin. In the request access page, we have only two roles. Let's see here. Manage, this is for create, this is for update, request emergency role and request enterprise role. Beyond that, we don't have any way to request other accesses. Let's see. See, there is no way to request for it. We can create it, but there's no way to request. Only you can request for emergency roles and enterprise roles. So something I believe that should not be the design. They should be able to at least give application-based role access, right? Mm, and transactional also because they say just a type, but it's not there, but this is something they have. Oh. And this is a pretty older version. Many of the issues which we face in this are actually fixed in the later versions. But as of now, this is a primitive version. I worked on this version around, I talk, spoke to people and they said that they worked on this version around three to three and a half years back. So you can just imagine how old this version is, which we are leveraging. First, uh, it is what it is. So nothing we can do beyond that. So this is pretty much about roles. Okay. So I'll show you, you had some doubt in analytics, right? Emails is also done, rules is rules. I'll tell you about other two rules. But uh, now, only a couple of things are left. Obviously, I'll cover the analytics part because you had doubt how to get, how to run it. But uh, rule, uh, rules clear, right? No doubts when it comes to rule. Obviously, you'll have to tweak the customization, but those customizations can be tweaked at double configuration level. Uh, and that's about it because that's basically on the business requirement and uh, on the fresh test, they have very detailed document as in how to do it. But this is pretty much the basic when it comes to handling of roles. So, so far what we have covered is we have covered roles. We have covered rules. I'll cover entitlement and re request rules. I'll think of any examples and then I'll tell you that. We have covered email templates, how to configure it. Analytics, I'll show you how to do it. Workflow, we have configured SAV roles, we have configured user groups, we have configured ERS, we have done identity, uh, sorry, endpoint and security system done, user creation done, and connection done. So we'll be covering these three sections and certification. This is something which was top of mind. So certification, something we'll have to actually check. So this this will be your major savient related training. And it's just a, a basic training, right? If you start looking at each module, it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. But once you have that developed understanding, you can actually handle these once you start uh, doing it. Uh, so I'll cover certification, SOD, global configuration, job control panel, today itself, and uh, maybe one or two sections in the next class. But 
and after that analytics i'll show you how to create analytics how to run it and uh, that's about it so let me take you through analytics once and then we'll cover rest of the sections and then make sure that you have one week one week time right make sure you spend some time going through different modules try to understand and if you see any problems if you find any issues make sure that you discuss those with me in the next section because our uh, next session most probably will be our last session because three hours yesterday three hours today and one and a half hours before that and it's usually around uh, eight hours training but next time i'll again cover every topic for you just to give you a bit a bit of understanding so that you and now we have covered each and every piece separately you're able to uh, connect or relate better as in come to overall design high level design as in why we do something and which block to use there's something which we'll do in the next section but as of now let's check the <clears throat> I told you how to create entitlements, right? How to create entitlement type and how to create entitlement, right? Manually. Usually it happens with import. So let me tell you that as well. So to request anything, we need entitlements. Unless we have that entitlement, we'll not be able to request it, right? So how to do it? Go to you have to create first security system, you have to create endpoint. And after creating endpoint, you have to go in the endpoint and then you have to create something with entitlement type. It specifies what is the type of entitlement. After creating entitlement type, you have to go to, you can just come here, action, create entitlement type. After go to do, go to entitlement and create an entitlement and map it to the security system. All you have to do is come here, create entitlement of uh, test ENT5. Usually we don't create it, but since it's a, a distributed application, we'll have to do it. Usually these are created by import. You can say, what is security system? It is for payroll management endpoint as payroll management entitlement type is payroll come here and create it and entitlement get created this new entitlement will get so person will be able to request this entitlement so that's how you create it entitlement because usually it gets created by import but since we are doing it here we'll create it manually because it's a disconnected system we don't have any target system in the application because once you create it, the person will be able to request this access. So make sure you create security system, create endpoint, create entitlement, request for this users, create workflow, check whether it's following the right workflow or not, right? Then create user update rule, technical rule, try to create user and check whether it's happening or not. Because if you're able to do this much only, you have pretty much good uh, starting point when you start working on your engagement, you'll have a pretty good idea. And once you start working, you'll be able to handle things better. Okay, right. And <clears throat> uh, let's come here to the analytics part, which uh, I thought you had some doubt here. So uh, let's get to analytics using SQL query and mention the name of analytics. Uh, let's say. anything can be the name here status is active right you have to write sql query what kind of data you want to have it in the report that varies from business to business i mean uh, people uh, want to display information related to uh, accounts if a person have certain accounts or, and how to do it so in the in the one of the good part about the later versions or is they they give something called a data analyzer here it's not uh, present in this version in the data analyzer, you can actually view all the database tables. And in those database tables, you can actually refer it. You can see all the tables, all the things, and delivering that, you can all you have to do is write a SQL query here. So only thing which we leverage in Savient is the SQL query. So you have to write SQL query to handle various queries. For this, I'm just keeping it simple because I don't have the database analyzer to show you, and you'll not be able to understand better. For this, is, let's select first name. Uh, first name, comma, last name from users where username is equal to, uh, sorry, whether username is equal to anything 
or you can just uh, mention if you want to just have a list as limit let's limit it to 10 users it's a simple sql query i've written category is what kind of report is this generally we keep it usage because usage is for anything we don't want to give user any loud action that the user can take certain actions uh, in the report you can revoke access or remove access these are basically runtime analytics uh, these are used but usually it's not the case and risk what is the risk of this report come here and email template again email template came but uh, what is the purpose of email template here if you want to send this report as an attachment in an email you have to uh, select this email template so this e report whenever the report is run this report will send as an email template to the end user uh, you can select this will happen similarly we don't have uh, this configured but this can happen if you preview here it will give you previews or whenever creating a report is always better to click preview because if there's any error it will show you on the screen that this is the error but otherwise if it's not the error the report can come here that means it's working fine it is returning two columns as per our and then create it and we visible means these two columns will be visible on the report and this filter is whether you can use filter or not so let's remove this let's submit it the report got created and we can come here and we can actually see this was the report which we created and there are two options here in run dry run is basically check whether it's working fine or not you just run it the report will not be created as such but it's just to make sure that it's working fine then we have run now run history run now it will run it now run history will be used to check how many times it was ran and then a sub option of schedule you can schedule a report here but when do you want to report or run this report hourly daily weekly then cron expression is to write a flexible uh, cron expression to when to run it uh, you can you can use a cron expression generator and if you want to schedule it you can schedule it here and if you want to just run it now it's always better to run the schedule and come here let's click here and click on run now it is run and let's uh, go to the history to check it what happened so what the hell it should have come here it's coming since yesterday it's not showing any reports here but it comes here and i don't know why it's happening i'll have to actually this instance is behaving weirdly from time to time that certification so if i there are certain reports i ran last time if i go here and check in the history i can see these reports are the history section yeah these are the reports which were uh, last time we ran this report test report for run right so under this section you can see which was run and just click uh, you can come here you can just click on view history and then you can view the reports from here so there are two ways actually you can come to the ui to view the reports or you can send it as an email if you select email template then it will send the report as an email uh, and you can actually come and export it csv excel and you can use this filter first name last name these are the filter which i told you pay select this value only this user record will come so this is actually is to show the values so this is about analytics how to create analytics how to actually uh, run analytics in, in the next class i'll show you how to run, create the runtime analytics firstly you work here you take a week you do this and then next time i'll show you how to uh, have this runtime analytics as well runtime analytics and uh, other type of analytics but this is the basic analytics you go back you create one you see how it done and next time i'll uh, cover the more advanced things as well during last session uh, let's jump on to the next part so the next two parts which i'm try uh, which i'll teach you these are not working on the instance which we have and we have to i try to actually resolve these issues but these are not getting resolved so we have to actually involve someone from the savian team on the training team but as of now i don't think so they will provide any one for the training instance so there are certain modules which are not working i try to resolve it but it's not working so i'll tell you how to configure it and then i will uh, logically tell you what happens you know uh, what happens later on but as of now uh, i can't access those uh, modules because it's throwing some error 
and uh, that is the problem. So the two topics which are going to cover uh, back to back are certification, which are also known as campaign in Sabian, and then SOD segregation of duty. So as of now, what we have done, if you look uh, from the uh, logical perspective of implementation that we imported all the users from the authority source. We imported uh, all the, we onboarded an application and in part of application onboarding, we create security system endpoint and then configure the connection. And then using that connection, we pull in all the accounts and accesses from a target application within Savion. And after having, after having this setup, user can actually come into Savion to request access uh, for various target applications. But now, something the concept of certification comes into picture why do we need certification so we need certification just to ensure that right people have right access in the organization certification are triggered periodically some organization have it uh, twice a uh, twice a uh, year and your few organization have an yearly basis some organization have a quarterly basis and what a certification basically does is certification actually there are three four types of certification uh, the three majorly used are manager level certification. So in manager level certification, what will happen is uh, uh, when manager level certification is triggered, a manager can see all the people who are reporting to him and people for whom that person is manager. And then that person can see access, the manager can see access of all his reportees. And then a manager can take action whether that person needs that particular access or not. For example, I'm the manager and suppose 10 people are reporting to me. The manager level certification, when is it's launched, I will I will get that, so I do the certifier. I will need to take action on all those 10 users and then decide whether all those 10 users need whatever access they have as of now or not. So this is the concept of manager certification similarly for entitlement owner each entitlement can have owner right so whenever i suppose there is an entitlement called test payroll management entitlement one and i am that owner of that entitlement so when certification is triggered i can see who are the people who have access to my entitlement and then i can take action i, I can action whether that person needs that access or not similarly is the case for uh, similarly is the case for sorry uh, role owner uh, yeah certification certification triggered and then role owner can take action whether uh, that person needs access for the uh, for uh, uh, needs access or not for that role so these are the three basic types of certification and how to trigger certification i'll show you that uh, we have to uh, can you see my screen yes okay so as it's the case with uh, everything we have two configurations here one is at global level and one is to trigger the certification so we come here we go to that station bit which is here and here there are three options so for this demo let me create uh entitlement owner I'm not able to trigger the certification. There is some issue. I try to debug as much as possible, but it seems like it's not getting triggered. Uh, but uh, let me tell you, it's not very difficult thing to understand. It's very easy. Entitlement, uh, a test one. Select type, whether it's role owner or entitlement owner. For manager level, you can just click on campaign. Similar thing come up, similar pop-up comes up. Click on entitlement owner certification. And then what security system do you want to certify? You can mention that only certify particular security system or you can select all security system. If you just want to run it for one application, select it here, want to run for all, then for all. End date has to be greater than start date. For certification, end date has to be greater than the start date. So you can come here, you can schedule it to happen in future or you can run it now. But let's run it now and let's make sure so the certification will start on june 6th and it will end on june 12th and the person will have to take action within this time period to period click on next now these options come so do you want to run for all certifier or select for manual query so if you select all 
certifiers what will happen if uh, let's open this thing here content argument uh, and then come here and go to identity repository you can go to entitlements you can see payroll management has three entitlements right so it will be run for all the certifier if you actually set a manual query then you can write manual query that who should be the certifier like for which entitlement owner do you want to run but usually we run it for all we select on uh, but if i would, if i just want to run for one entitlement owner i can set the manual query and a certain advanced configuration user who are the user for whom i want to run the certificate to run to run for the all user do you want a particular list of user what kind of accounts do I want to run? You can specify here. Then entitlement query, what are the entitlements for which I want to run the certification? Then uh, what are the user type for which I want to run? There can be employee, contractor. These list gets updated as per whatever we have configured in the system. You can select it from there. So these are the certain advanced level configurations. You don't have to specify it. If you don't specify it, it run it for all the users, for all the accounts, for everything. And you can schedule it here when to run it, or you can just create now. So I can see nothing is coming here. And entitlement should get created here. But this is the bug which this training instance has. I've raised this concept to the training team, but I didn't get any resolution. So I can just tell you manually. But I'll tell you what will happen. Once I trigger the certification, all the certifier in this case are the entitlements owner uh, will come to save in to take action there are certain actions which they can take whether first of thing they can do couple of things first is they can certify that okay this person has access and this person should have access second option action they can take and very simple it comes here under action tab it's a very simple thing it's certification is very simple to implement but I can't show you. I'm so sorry for that. But something like come here. Second is revoke access. If I revoke access, then that person's action uh, access will be revoked. Second is consult. For example, though I am the certifier, but I'm not sure whether you need that access or not because you're working with some other team. So what will happen? I can consult someone else. Hey, this person, do you think this person needs access or not? So I can actually consult that person and that person will be able to help me with the action. And then I, 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 the final verdict is mine. And the person will say, okay, this person needs access or not. But again, the final verdict will be mine. If I want to overwrite his decision, I can come and overwrite it here. And the last is reassign. Reassign is you assign your certification item to someone else and that person will take action. In this case, in reassignment, you cannot override that other person decision. It's his decision, but in case of consult, we're just asking for advice. Final decision will be yours. You can either go with the consulted person's advice or action or you can overwrite it but in case of reassignment you can you you can not take action whatever that person take action will be final and after taking all these actions just submit it and after submitting the certification that uh, all those actions will be triggered and all those actions will be taken as per your decision so uh, this is about certification i know it's very difficult to understand but sorry rama i can't help you with this because it's not coming here only but uh, this is how it is and uh, <laughs> there's i mean there's nothing i can do but i can tell you in the action section the how it looks like action will come entitlement will come all the details of the entitlement and user will come and then you have to take action the certain action you can take is certify. Certify means to accept and allow access for that account and entitlement or the role. Okay. Revoke is you are revoking access. You say that you, this person don't need it. Let's revoke the access. Consult is you're consulting someone else. And there's something called as conditional certification. Conditional certification is to give temporary access for a certain period of time. For example, I know that you need this role, but you just need it for 10 days. So I can just say that for 10 days, let's have this person keep the access. But after 10 days, I remove that person's access. So that will happen in case of conditional certification. So these are the various options a person can take. And once you certify, you can complete a certification and then the action will be 
taken as per the decision you have taken but if you start if you get an opportunity to work it's a very simple module to work on actually you just configure it and on the fresh test they have very good documentation along these then so if you are ever confused what action does what you can do there and that's a very simple thing and usually it happens in two steps the first step is validating the employment for example uh, 10 uh, if 10 people either uh, 10 user for whom i have to certify the first step in certification is to confirm whether that person works for me or not if that person doesn't work for me i'll not have to, I'll, I'll no longer have to certify that user the first step is to make sure that i i pick the employer employment verification and once i certify that these people work for me next step is to approve and revoke entire access and this is where we take this action uh, certify revoke conditional certification and consult or resign these are the actions which we take and how to trigger it simple come to a test station come to create new and then take the action next 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 and certification will trigger the person will come and take action other thing is under the entitlement type if you come here right you can see something which comes here like when one application is here and sorry let's go to entitlement and under entitlement type we have something called as certifiable if you remove the certifiable these entitlement type and whatever entitlements are mapped to this entitlement type will no longer be certifiable so if you want to make this certified select this as certifiable then only this entitlement type will be certified and there are certain configuration so as of now we haven't configured email templates you know uh, or were able to manage uh, the action or the information that should be displayed to the certifier so all these things can be managed in global configurations so let's go to global configurations and see how these options look like the configuration but go to global configuration and the configuration you can see certain configurations so let's see entitlement owner configuration we have user manager configuration we have role owner configuration and we have all these options which are specific to this kind of entitlement the first thing let's look at the email template so create when the certification is created do you want to relaunch email so usually if you want to let the administrator know that certification has been launched or has been created we trigger this thing then we send reminder that okay the entitlement owner you haven't taken any action please take any action you specify how many days the reminder should be sent what should the email template to be used second reminder third reminder fourth we can send a little fifth reminder so this is the there reminders are there which i have taken after completion if you want to send email so what kind of email uh, do you want to send you can send that you can send let you know the system administrator that this person has completed certification consult if you're consulting someone that the uh, person should be able to understand right that they have to take action or else how will they know for that we use this email template consult completed like uh, the consult has uh, the consultant taken that action then the approver should or the person who actually asked for consult should able to know that this has been done so we leverage this for that purpose discontinue the certification discontinue this email is triggered certification is usually launched in a preview state preview state is the administrator can actually view that all the configuration were right if not they can change it so that is the purpose of preview so these are the various email templates which are used for certification and default certifier if that person is not for example if that person is not there for whom certification was launched then default certifier can take action we can just mention who that person was and then that person can come and take action on the behalf of that person and these are the various option revoke task if the task is revoked then what email should be triggered we can mention it here and then we can have this individual action user pop-up as in what all action can a person can take for example we can have that um, uh, the certifier can actually approve and reject or actually consult if i don't say consult then the certifier will not be able to consult anyone on the certification that person will able to only approve and reject 
and then what kind of attributes are shown to entitlement owner like on the certification what all information that entitlement owner should view these are all user attributes as you can see and you can see these are if user level attribute that a person should see so if i say company name the certifier will be able to see company name and certification Similarly, user entitlement attributes, sorry. So what are the entitlements? So entitlement also have attributes, right? If I just uh, go to admin. So entitlement, just like user profile entitlement also have uh, certain attributes. So just to make sure that what all are visible to the end user, I can just search. So if I open this entitlement, this entitlement has certain values, entitlement value, type, endpoint, display name, a glossary says uh, which is the status and then other attributes if i want these to be visible to the certifier i can select it from here you can see certification glossary is there privilege custom properties so everything if i want all this information to be visible i can just select and only those will be visible to that user and these are various action button that should be there like show and hide conditional certification if i hide it then user will not able to do conditional certification Right, show consult to open doesn't belong to me. If a person doesn't belong to me in employment verification, if I say it, then consult will come, otherwise it will not come, right? Then campaign lock-in comments. When you lock in the campaign, like you have taken all the action, do you want to provide comment or not? It can be there. Hide and show consult is not able to refer for consult. Then hide bulk option. If you want user to take bulk option and certification, what a person can do is actually select all the user and take action at once. If you don't want user to take that action, you have to hide it, right? If you don't, if you don't want user to have the option to select whether it belongs to me or not, you can change it from here. So these are various action level configurations, which we live in certification. These are various email level configuration, which we need in certification. And these are various uh, informative, what kind of information do you want the certifier to visible? It comes under here. So whatever configuration we do here, it will be applicable to all the certifications. Similarly, they have a manager configuration and role owner or campaign config. So the, I know it's very difficult for you to visualize because you're new to the tool, but I can't help you. Once you get the tool, if you have to work on certification, start working anything with this information, I think you should be able to actually kind of go ahead and take decisions. But certification is very simple, but I'm not scared too much that you'll not be able to understand it. Certification is very simple. Once you learn, launch it, you'll see all the option. Just play around with it and you should be able to do it. And uh, the last major topic for our discussion is SOD, which is segregation of duties. So what are what is segregation of duties? Segregation of duties is actually used to ensure that we don't have conflicting accesses within a person shouldn't have that conflicting access a simple example i gave you last time right if you consider the case of banking system if a person is able to actually come to savient uh, in a banking module sorry if a person has two rights one to place a request on someone's behalf for loan approval and if that person has the right to approve the loan. So in that case, it will be fraud, right? There will be no one else will be actually managing this thing or taking decision. Uh, so if I want to favor someone to get fraudulent loan, I can just come and place a request on his behalf and approve the loan and this person get loan, loan. And no one else is actually having a say here. So this is causing some sort of a fraudulent behavior. So to avoid such stuff, what we have to do is we have something called as SOD, segregation of duties. And what segregation duty does is it doesn't allow a user to have such kind of access. To configure SOD, we have to actually go to the SOD module. This first page actually shows all the SOD violations which are happening within C event as of now. And to create it, we have to go and go to the rule set part now a simple thing to remember is always go top to bottom these three are basically used let's click on rule set so first you have to create a rule set 
don't worry about the nomenclature that's how savient has created it all you have to do is come here take action create a rule set and just provide the name of the rule set test payroll rule set for example okay description you want to give it a description give it so that people are able to understand it create it okay now go to risks now we have to create risk come here create risk create new risk i mentioned that uh, test payroll risk okay and in the rule set here map it with the rule set which we created in the previous step come and the rest these fields are not required we'll configure this later in there so let's come to the function so function is actually where we define the conflicting entitlements come here and create a new function create a new and say test payroll on one okay rule set is our test payroll rule set status should be actor and function is so the two type of application sap based application non sap based application so for all the non sap based application select this or if the application type is sap select that and just create it now it got created now in the entitlement tab we write all the entitlement and it will actually show you these options if you write anything it will give you these options so these four options can be used these three are logical operators and or not i'll tell you example enter the entitlement value so entitlement value of enter and then you have to select what kind of entitlement do you need for example i select right only and next option if i select i come here right a sorry it's done and then i say come select or or is logical of either this or that and then i have to write ent val again sorry just mention anything it will come ent val is equal to uh name of any application uh, for example it's right only for example come and save it this justification is uh testing anything can be done it got created here right it's not created the function has not changed i have to approve it just in case of workflow i have to come here and approve the this function test func i have to come here and approve the uh, approve here just in case of entitlement we have to approve this and it got approved now let's get another function so how sod actually works in save enters and um, let me show you using images this is rule set under rule set we have risk and under risk we have two functions func under rule set we have let me click better image so firstly we have this which is called rule set okay and under uh, under under rule set we have something called as risk and under risk we have function func one we will create two function in the rule set func two and within this function what happens is so so it happens like this it will come here it will come here it comes here and within these entitled functions we have entitlements uh, ent1 is entitlement 1 ent2 is entitlement 2 and this similarly this can have entitlement 1 let's say entitlement 3 is here so how sod would work is if we have these two entitlement then this person can't have this entitlement so this is how the mapping is done so within risk we define these functions and then in the function we can have i told you and or, or operation so we can have these and and or operators here so if there's there some or operator here so what will happen is either this person have this entitlement or that this entitlement this person will not be allowed to have this entitlement similarly there is something called and if this person have entitlement a1 and entitlement 2 then this person will not be able to request entitlement 3 so this is how the mapping is done rule set create a rule set 
then create a risk just to give give the name and then define functions and function define the entitlements for which you want to give rules uh, for which you want to give uh, entitlements and we have to define these conflict entitlements now come here then we have to get another function create a new function function is a uh, test payroll func2 come here rule set will be test payroll rule set status will be active function will be non sap just create one and in this let's have entitlement add called ent val equal to uh, test payroll this entitlement then justification just save it go to the rule set view request approve this just create this comment this is what created now we have created the functions and let's do their mapping in the risks open this risk payroll risk let's validate that it got mapped so in the function one let's select payroll function one and function two let's select payroll function two and this come here and yeah? update it okay the function has been mapped in the rule set just ensure that this rule has this in active state so this is an active state okay so we did the mapping we specify the functions we specify the entitlements we specified the risk part of it and this is now we are good to go so after configuring everything now when we place the request if we have these things right then what will happen is in the dash um, sorry not in the dashboard in the sod violations page if i have sod it will come here that this person requested so and so access so open is these sod's are open in progress is that sod is the, are actually in progress and risk accepted i if i have the person who will taking action on these sod's i have accepted the risk i have said okay i know it's somewhere the risk but let this person have this access okay close this i have closed it i, I think it's fine let's not anything remediated is i have taken action and i removed one of the entitlements so these are the options and there is some other person who have access to the sod violation page and once they come here they can see all the violations which are happening in the system they can take any action they can either remediate it or accept the risk and say go ahead with it and let's now try and how to request the similar process is happening we can come and actually request for these rules like come here now this user actually we've used this user multiple times let's come to this user go next and let's select payroll management here click on checkout and then in the checkout part uh, uh, checkout part we can select the different entitlements so the sod was defined between these two so it's not allowed to have these two same value at the same time same entitlement at the same time click on next and then in the summary type the sod is, is not working in this case and again it's not working in the version i'm using as well so in my current version we have raised it as a ticket to the engineering team and they said that they'll look into this why it's not working but usually what happens is then screen turns red here and it gives you an idea that what you were requesting actually is causing sod violations we can still go ahead and place the request it will throw an error yeah because of this issue which we are encountering so this is something which i can't fix the engineering team will have to look into that and similarly we are facing similar issues in the version i am currently working so one of my team of members is working in sod and it's not working for her as well but this is how you configure sod part and this is how you actually see so when when once you're submitting the request in the last page you can see they'll give you information that you now this is the violations are occurring within your system and this is how happening but you can still submit the request and then it's based on the decision taken by the person who have the access and this person can come here see the violation and take actions on this page if they accept the request 
then you'll get access uh, to that conflicting part. So this is how it takes place. So this is what uh, SOD is all about. But it's not working. This module also not working. So these two modules are something which are not working. And so I can't for you. I'm so sorry again. It's not under my control. We'll have to kind of save uh, uh, the team to fix uh, these issues. But as of now, uh, I can't show you how it is. Okay. Okay, Ravi, I'll check with them and yeah. But you got the idea how to configure it. Yeah, yeah. How to do it. Yeah, I got the idea. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much uh, about SODs. And uh, we have created rule sets. We have actually issued, uh, we'll not able to take any actions because obviously. Uh, so there are two type of SOD. One is preventative and one is uh, detective. So basically what can happen is what is uh, preventative is preventative is what you configured. We configure the rule sets and when a person is preventing any ac uh, access, that person can see that this is the violation. But in case of uh, detective, what happens is there could be actually, you know that uh, a person's account can be created at the back end, right? It's not only through Savient. So usually I told you this, this thing, right? Uh, that personal account can be created from the back end as well. And then everything can be important to Savient, right? Which I showed you, uh, I wish I actually taught you the initial phases. So Savient is there. We have the target system. That target system can already have accounts and accesses. So it's possible that uh, accounts can be added from this system as well and not via Savient all the time. So once these are imported, then what can happen is uh, if there is SOD conflict happening, then detective SOD is triggered. And that uh, then similar process happens. They can take action that like whether this person needs any access or not. But this is what detective SOD is. And preventative is actually through the approval process. Pretty much same concept, but be capable for everything and not just one module, any particular uh, item. For example, whatever configuration we made a global configuration for uh, entitlement owner attestation, it will be applicable for all entitlement owner attestation or certifications, not just particular. So the configuration, we have certain configurations can see it's a comprehensive list. What should be the configuration at home tab? What should be a configuration for roles, which we actually saw? Then campaign, then register user, SOD rule set. So whatever configurations we mention here are basically applicable to all the modules. So whatever configuration I made make for role, it will be applicable for all the modules and not just specific to one role. So this is global configurations. We have something related to analytics as well. So in analytics, whatever I mentioned here, be it uh, the entity accept a violation reminder. Don't worry about it. it's too much of technicality. Once you need these things, you can come actually and view it here. And in the freshest ticket, they have actually given you good information uh, that show query for simple example could be show Query. If I go here and show you, if I go to admin part, uh, let me go to the antics bit. What I mean here is, so you remember that issue that we were not able to actually view the analytics query. Let me show you. If I come here and if I just open this part of uh, open test final report, and if I just click on edit here, I'm not able to view the query which is written here. Let's see the entitlement query is missing. If I come here, where is it? Where is it? Yeah. If I say show query, then I will be able to view the query for this. You see, now I'm able to view the query for this certification. Uh, sorry, with the, for this report. So all these configurations, I have never used all these configuration. We can so similarly for edit query. I can't edit this query as of now because this checkbox was not checked. Okay. Now I come here 
and if I just select it, I will be able to edit this query as well. So these are the global layer configurations, which actually used to which actually can be used to determine the behavior. Similarly, show runtime analytics. I'll cover this in next section. What is runtime analytics? So if I mark it here, you will not be able to see runtime analytics. Uh, re notify risk. Uh, high, medium, low. If you want to notify the risk, notify category. So user certification. So these are there. So we can handle these right for using this global configurations so if similarly we have something for sod's these are the conflicts which are related to uh, sod's as well we have something for analytics common is for common usage these are uh, for the common purposes which are used similarly we have for roles uh, and these for campaign i've already covered so whenever you are configuring any of the modules and if you need certain kind of configurations, it is always better that we come to global configuration and check if something is applicable for our use case or not. And that is something which is uh, recommended as well. So once you start working, for example, you're working on roles, I'll see my requirements. And if there's something which uh, are required uh, for my implementation, I'll come here, I can make the respective changes. The list is very comprehensive and to be honest, I have not used all of them because it just varies from implementation to implementation. You don't have to mug it all up. You can always come to the fresh desk. They will give you answer that which option to be used for what purpose. And you can configure all these here. But for this purpose, we have seen analytics roles which we configured actually. Then all these certifications uh, we saw. So these are the various things which you can actually leverage to configure global level settings so that once you start working on it, these are applicable if for your for you and for your case. So these this is pretty much about the global configurations. And then we have something which is related to the job control panel. Job control panel is nothing which is used to tell Sabient what actions to take and when to take. Major what uh, major uh, job control in job control panel what are the major jobs which we use first is uh, run uh, sorry, run detective rules these are used to run trigger the detective rules uh, be it user update rule or the technical rule so whenever we have to run it we use this thing email history job is run to is used to run, uh, to trigger the emails custom query job is basically used if you want to do any custom action for example a simple example that i can think of is uh, changing status of any user or whenever we import user from for development purpose for example if we import user from target system within savient they'll have these are real data they'll have actual email id of people who are there in the system and for development purpose we don't want that email should be triggered to these people so you can write a see it's basically a sql query that okay update the email ID of this person so that uh, emails are not triggered. Uh, add extra space in the email ID. So there's something which we can do here. And once we do that, you know, this custom job will be triggered. Uh, and then the, as for the query the action will be taken. Email history job is there. And the last one is WS retry. WS retry job is actually used to do the provisioning bit of it. And then under Database, if you are reporting user from database, these two are rules. Complete is used if you want to pull in all the user record from end application to save it. We use incremental user report when we are actually trying to uh, not import all the users, but use only those records which were newly added and the records which were updated last time. So there's timestamp which uh, is stored and if you mark incremental, suppose there are 100 users and only 10 users account were updated. We don't want to pull in 100 users all the time. So only 10 accounts will be used. Similarly, if the accounts are reported from database, this job is used. If accounts are reported from data incremental, this is used. And under data, user import by connection, if we're importing user by connection, this job is used. If you are doing access import or be it account import, uh, using connection then we use uh, these so these are mostly job which will be used and so user managed certification deprovisioning job for attestation related jobs these 
all our jobs create a schedule attestation if you run it all the jobs will be created or scheduled a cert certification will be created and scheduled then attestation reminder to send the reminder emails we have to trigger this job then send consult email if you want to send consult email you have to uh, click on this job run it so these are various attestation related jobs and for SOD related jobs this come under this section these I have never used it after working for so long SOD is it's not working for us so I've never actually worked in SOD but I know I've implemented one so I, that's how I know about it attestation related job it's mentioned here data related job mentioned here database all the jobs are here analytics all the jobs are here and similarly for utility uh, custom query bid the custom query or uh, you know provisioning job these are email history job these are mentioned here the job are basically used to tell savient what action to take and when to take it usually when we move toward the higher environments we don't run the jobs manually we have a schedule and based on that schedule we run various jobs and we can schedule it using cron expression or a simple uh, schedule using R daily or that basis so you can come here you can see schedule job you can just schedule the job whenever you want to run it 